Several of you all have asked me to go over flashing. So let's go ahead and oh, wait. Did you all mean pre-flashing prints? Welcome to the Naked Photographer, where I'll be exposing myself. No, 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 I won't. Mm -mm. That's not better in my head. And before we get too involved in pre-flashing, if you want to help support this channel, you can get shirts just like this down in the link from my Teespring store, or you can purchase a print from my other store. Again, the link is down in the description. Pre-flashing is a way to bring the emulsion of the paper up to its ready state for uh, exposure. It takes a certain amount of energy to break the threshold of exposure to gain density. Uh, we talked a little bit about that in my safe light test video, if you want to go back and review that. But in a nutshell, the emulsion doesn't just start to build density from the very first photons that hit it. It takes a little bit to break that inertia. Think of it kind of like if your car stalled and you needed to push it. If it's from a dead stop, there's a certain amount of energy you have to exert pushing the car before it begins to roll. Now imagine if you are pushing that car and it's not moving and a friend comes and helps you push as well, but you have already exerted enough energy to almost get that car rolling. When they come over and help, all of their energy is moving the car forward. You have already broken the inertia and then their energy is used to move the car. It's kind of like that with paper. There's a certain amount of exposure that almost starts to form an image, but then everything after that does form an image. So pre-flashing will get us to that threshold and then everything with the exposure goes on top of that. So if you have very dense highlights in your negative, by pre-flashing all of the light for that highlight is used for creating the highlight because you've already reached the threshold with extra energy. I already have a print ready to go that I've created the correct density and contrast. However, these windows right here on the side are completely blank. I know there's texture in there looking at the negative, so I can burn them, but they're very sharp windows and burning also brings in some of the window frame. I don't want that any darker. So a pre-flash is going to help bring that density up here without really affecting this. So this is a good candidate for that. Let's go over to the enlarger and we'll go over the steps on how to get uh, to the next step. There are a couple of different ways that you can do this. I already have my enlarger set up to print, so everything's in focus, negative in here, all that sort of stuff. Easel's in the right spot. If I had a second enlarger, uh, I could pre-flash under that and set it up differently and then move the paper here. I don't. I've only got the one enlarger. So my options would be to remove the negative, lift the head up as far as it could go, and then simply expose the piece of paper to pre-flash to just blank white light, but at very low intensity. Um, I'd have to stop the lens down in addition to moving the head. I don't want to do that. So instead, what I'm going to do is keep everything the same and expose it through this piece of white acrylic. That's only about an eighth of an inch thick, um, but it's enough that I don't have to change my aperture. I don't have to move my head. I can simply put it right under the lens. It will block enough light to get a pretty good uh, length of time. So it's very controllable, but it will also completely diffuse the image so that I will have just an even tone all the way across the paper. Now, how long do I expose it? I'm going to do a test strip with increments of three seconds, but what I am looking for 
is the longest amount of time that does not create any density on the negative. So I want blank white piece of paper, but just below what would create the first amount of light gray um, in the exposure. So I'm going to place my strip down here under my border, but I'm actually going to put some under the easel. That will give me a perfectly blank white border to compare my patches to, because it can be a little difficult to know if you're looking at pure white or not. Uh, if you um, just expose the whole width of the test strip. So this is how I'm going to show uh, or set everything up. So let me turn the lights off and get to the next step for you. Timer is at three seconds. Let's get out and strip. Cover a portion of the border. And now I'm just going to work in three second increments. And here's the test strip. Now, it may be hard for you to see on the camera, but what we have, get the glare off of it. So I'm gonna look at my monitor so I can make sure you see. So uh, don't worry about where I'm looking exactly. But you can see right here, this is the unexposed border that was underneath the easel. And then I've got my time increments through here. So this was three second increments. Uh, we ended at 21, so I can clearly see a 21 patch. 18, 15, 12, and I can't see a nine. So we're here between somewhere between nine and 12. So now we're gonna go back and figure out exactly where between nine and 12 we get the threshold. The idea being we want the most amount of exposure without building any density. Nine, no density, 12 there is, but we don't know about the rest. So let's go narrow down even more. So as we saw in that test strip, 12 seconds definitely had density, nine seconds did not. I don't know if nine seconds is best, if I need to do 10 or 11. Uh, but quite frankly, I might still have to do 12 or 13, maybe even 14, because the, uh, the way that the light comes on and goes off between each step may have actually increased my uh, exposure time more than I really thought. So 12 seconds may have been a little longer than 12. Um, so just to check that possibility, I'm going to expose smaller patches, each one a second, uh, separate time. So I'm going to do a 14, 13, 12, 11, and 10 second patch. Each one will be exposed separately so that there's no buildup and um, afterglow from the previous um, click of the light. So let's start with a 14 second. Write that on here. And let's expose the whole thing. And I'm going to repeat this for 13 seconds, a 12, a, uh, an 11, and a 10. So here's 14 seconds. I can clearly still see density. So not that one. Let's take a look at 13. 13, can still see some density. So can you all see any density on there? No, sorry, you all can't see it, um, but it's evident here. All right, so 12 seconds. Yep, again, I still see some density. So now we have 11 and we have 10. Um, 11, I see it. So we're done there. 10, however, 10 is completely blank. I see no change. Now, 
I could go through and try to find 10.1, 10.2. I'm not going to do that. 10 is close enough for what we're doing. So I'm going to set the timer now for 10 seconds. We're going to flash a piece of paper and then make the exposure on top of that. So as we just saw, the pre-flash time needs to be 10 seconds. So let's get out a sheet of paper. I have no filtration here whatsoever. So let's put that in there and expose it for 10 seconds. So this is going to diffuse the light and give an even tone over the whole thing. But at 10 seconds, it shouldn't give us any tone whatsoever. It should be blank white if I were to develop it as is. But now we're going to change it to 12 seconds, which is my print time. Put my filtration back in place and expose my actual print exposure on top of the diffused pre-flash exposure. All right, let's see what we have. So here's the print again. This time I do have some detail and density. I can start to see the wire through the glass of the uh, security glass. Um, it does seem, still need some burning, but the density is there. Now it's just regular burning on top of that. I'm not trying to bring that uh, detail through that didn't show up before. Uh, the uh, time to get that uh, when just trying to burn or expose dark enough, this being a 12 second exposure overall, uh, I wanna say it took a 24 or 26 second exposure to get that in there. So it was double the amount of time of the original exposure to get to the same point that pre-flashing got. However, it has lowered my contrast. I don't know if you can see the difference, but here's the original and here's the new. It doesn't look any different on camera, um, but in person, I am losing quite a bit in here of the contrast. It's, it's uh, significantly lower. I wouldn't say significant. I would say half to maybe three quarters of a filter grade. Um, so now we have a choice. We can up the filter and try to get the contrast back uh, from uh, when we make the original exposure or the uh, print exposure as opposed to the pre-flash exposure. Or we can pre-flash only the windows. So that's what I am going to do. So I'm going to mask off my easel and expose just this portion for the pre-flash and then give the rest of the print its regular 12 second exposure time. So let's go look at that. As we just saw, the pre-flash really kind of lowered the overall contrast, even though it did exactly what I wanted when it comes to the uh, amount of highlight exposure that came in. So it gave us the highlight results I wanted, but now I can either increase my printing filter or I can mask off the rest of the paper and pre-flash only the areas that I want. And that's actually what I'm going to do. So let me turn the light on so I can see. I am going to place my card on my easel so that just the uh, window is seen. Let's tape that in place. the second card and I'm going to place it right here under the bottom of the window. Pour it with a roll. There we go. 
Um, and now, now, we will pre-flash the paper. But it should pre-flash only the window. seconds, no filter, diffusion, and flash. Now I'll place my filter back, go back to 12 seconds, and remove that and we'll print. So now the rest of the print should be exactly as my original print without the lower contrast because it didn't get affected by the pre-flash. Only that the bit with the window did. So let's see how that does. And here is my final print. Um, or at least as close as I'm going to get today. Uh, so I've got my full exposure here, 12 seconds, at the filter grade that I've chosen. And it's got all the snap in the, uh, the fine detail that I want. Here, I do have the detail for the window because I've only flashed this portion. It did not affect the rest. So why did it affect contrast in the first place? Well, you are basically adding a little bit of density in the high areas, but it is less effective for the low areas because that tiny little bit of extra exposure doesn't really affect something that's a, uh, a deep black or even a deep mid-tone. But once you start getting into the lighter mid-tones, highlights, um, and then the whites, that pre-flashing exposure has a much larger effect uh, because it, it may be in some cases getting twice the amount of light but down in the shadows it's nowhere near twice the amount of light so it acts more as a contrast reduction as well so uh, you can have two different options you can up your contrast grade to make up for it or you can try to mask things off and flash only the areas that you want affected. In this case, uh, masking off was pretty easy and uh, I felt like just the best choice. If you have something a little bit more complex to mask, then you can lay a piece of card or ruby lift on the easel, project your image onto it, and then draw out what you want to cut out, cut those portions out, keep the mask taped to the easel, then you can pre-flash just that area, pull the mask off, expose the paper, and that would work. So that's a good way to get you started on pre-flashing. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Go out there and make the best prints that you can, pre-flashing if you need to, and I will see you next time.